All right, so here's just a simple example of what some HTML source would look like. This is a similar example to the previous slide. On the left, we have our unordered list that has three list items. And visually on the right is what it would look like on a web page. The code on the left produces a bulleted list with three list items. And you can see that very top item has an attribute and a value. And it's making that specific item one list item visually different than the rest. In this case, it appears orange, but again, CSS would be responsible for styling that item orange or, or attaching any of the visual aspects to the element. So just a quick example to show you how that might look. Now, HTML tags fall into two broad classifications and they are block or inline tags. Block tags are things like the header tag, the footer tag article. You can see a simple list there of 10 or so different tags. You can see the header one tag is an example of a block tag. Inline tags on the right are things such as span, anchor tags, image tags, strong emphasis. So uh, we'll quickly discuss the difference between a block tag and an inline tag. And this kind of trips people up, I think, when they start out at HTML just a little bit. So first off, the block tag means that when you declare the tag, so if I was to do, let's say, a header tag in my HTML, let's assume that this gray box represents the browser window. So this is visually what I see in my web browser. If I did one header tag, it would fill up the entire width of the browser window. If I followed up directly below with another header tag, it appears below that header tag. And if I did another header tag, it would appear below that one. In other words, block level elements take up an, a, an entire line of horizontal space in the browser window, regardless of their width. You can see even if the width of two or three of these elements is short, they still take up the entire line. And that's opposed to inline tags, whereas if you do an inline tag, the same example here, let's pretend this is the browser window. If you do, let's say an anchor tag, it would appear. And if I did another anchor tag directly after it, instead of it appearing down on a new line, it appears to the side or in line to the other anchor tag. So inline elements will all appear on the same horizontal line until they run out of room and then they would pop down to the next line. But that's the main difference between an inline tag and a block tag as far as their visual representations. There's a few other differences as well that we'll get into in a later series in this um, course. Now that's the basics of the tags and their classifications. Now let's quickly look at the typical structure of an HTML document. So an HTML document is made up of three main portions and we'll quickly look at those. So this is a complete website. This code here that you see is a complete website valid with all of the required parts. The first line here you'll see is what we call the doc type or the document type. This declares what type of HTML your website is using, what version of HTML and some other information is conveyed to the web browser through the doc type. It's always the very first line in your document. The next line here is the HTML tags. It's always the second item and the very last item. So you can see that the tag HTML in all of your website code is encompassed inside of the HTML tag. It's the parent most tag for your HTML document. The next section is what we call the head section. Now the head section you can see opens on line three and it has two children um, inside of it. And the head tag is responsible for website metadata. So it's typically information that's not visually displayed on the page, but information about the page, such as the title or the character set or JavaScript files that are linked to it and CSS files that are linked to it and keywords and descriptions and things like that, author information, all that type of data that's not visual data, but helps structure the web page is inside of the head section. The third and probably most important section for us starting out is the body section. The body section is what's responsible for everything that's visually present on the website. So the majority of your code will likely go inside of the body section because that's responsible for the visual layout. So everything inside of the body will appear inside of the browser window. 
And those are the main sections of a HTML document. Again, we have the doc type, first line, HTML tags, and the head and body sections. All right, now that we have a few of those basics out of the road, let's go ahead and look at a few code examples to review some of these principles for HTML syntax.